Um, hey guys, I'm doing a patch 10.2 for patch preview. <clears throat> so this patch is actually going to come a day earlier. Uh, usually patches come, I think, Wednesday morning or like Tuesday night if you stay up. But today, this time it's coming Tuesday morning or Monday night. So it's actually going to be like 13 hours from, so it's six, six like 7 a.m. of Tuesday. But anyway, um, so this patch is actually going to be really big. Um, a lot of people have been complaining about the level 7 rollout, specifically the level 7 chosen rollouts but i'll get into that later so they're they're also making more player damage as the like earlier into the game and shifting away some of the player damage at the end so there's no longer going to be like 10 people at one life or like six people at one life on six one and then whoever hits the three star four cost player just instantly goes eighth so that's that's good um and i, but I think um they're, they're trying to shift a lot of the strength on 4-1 that it was on this previous patch into like uh, more so stage three and then making it so like boards like are slowly getting to where they are now um, later into the game. So you're not going to see like fully capped boards on four, like on stage four anymore, which is which is good, pretty healthy for the game. But I'm not sure how much it'll change and I'll get into it why. Um, but anyway, um, they're buffing Aphelios, Akali, Zin Zhao, Jin and Set. It, they're pretty light on the buffs. Um, it's more so the underperforming three and four costs. I really disagree with the Jin. I think Jin is, is still strong. It is 15 AD, which is a lot because of his scaling with the four shot. But um, I'll touch on that later. And they're nerfing a lot of the early game reroll comps. Because there's earlier player damage, people will be able to get away without rolling um, on stage three if you find like early chosen uh, Moonlight Lissandra, early chosen Moonlight Diana, um, Enlightened or Mage chosen Nami. So they're just uh, slightly nerfing. And Pike is just cultist, a really good unit. Um, and then slightly nerfing Zizira and slightly nerfing uh, chosen cultist only. Um, and then there's also going to be some adjustments, but I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. So the biggest thing I said at the beginning was the... Um, the roll odds. Uh, I, I have this little infographic if you want to like just pause the video or something, but um, just generally, I think it went from so like level four. So green means it goes up, yellow means it goes down relative to the previous patch. So on level four, um, it was 60% for a two cost. So like when I pre leveled and I see a one cost, I just get sad and I just say I low rolled. But now it's actually a higher chance, which is good because there was way too much pre leveling for no reason. Like playing around streaks just felt meaningless if you could just level and pray for a two cost chosen um, and they're also taking away the biggest takeaway is taking away the percentage of three cost chosens on five it went from 30 percent to five percent and then 45 percent to 40 percent and slightly putting on one just so mid game people can't spike as hard i don't think the level six one actually matters i think the level five one is good though because fighting against like a kindred chosen on stage two just feels like you just lost the matchmaking lottery um, and then stage seven the biggest thing is dude it goes from 30 percent for a four cost chosen to 5%. It, it, it basically just makes, uh, it, it like nullifies rolling on seven. But you you can still, you can definitely still roll on seven, but um, it, it feels a lot worse. And then uh, level eight, it's, um, I don't know why this is yellow, because I feel like it should be the same. But anyway, level eight feels almost exactly the same. But that that's the rollouts. Don't really look into this. Um, it, I think it's just more so it's, Go on level six. Um, if your board is not stable, maybe roll a little bit on three two for a stable board. And I, uh, ideally, you want you want to have a board where it's it's really obvious what to put in. For example, like your level six is going to be keeper, your level seven is going to be cultist, etc., etc., etc. Just having a game plan and then stepping up and then replacing some units and not your entire board. So one one uh, example is like keeper cultist opener. And then on level seven, um, instead of replacing your entire board and rolling down, um, you actually need to play around the cannon. You play around the Jarvan, pretty strong units, and then you flex the other carries depending on what you hit. Uh, Trains and chosens, they are balancing the chosen AD units such as Yasuo, Ophelios, Zed. Zinzao, Ash, Jin, Talon, and Warwick for 20 AD just because the units had really good AD scaling. And a 30 AD from a chosen trait is, is two BS words, which is like pretty, it's pretty insane. Like the difference between a chosen Ash and a non chosen Ash was pretty big. So they are slightly tuning that down. And here, here's a good balance change. I, I still think Cultus is like beyond broken. For example, in the tourney that I played, um, the NA qualifier, which had like all the top players, every single game like every, almost everyone in the lobby is competent and they are just looking for a cultist keeper opener because you can transition around uh Jarvan Kennen and not only that you can you don't have to roll that much on seven if you high roll a cultist chosen but um what they're doing is right now a chosen cultist like let's say a chosen cultist Elise or a chosen cultist TF it counts as four stars towards the Galio but now it's only going to be an extra one so like a two star Elise would be three stars um towards the Galio which is which is a good change um it's it's definitely the, they have the right idea but I still think that like I was running the cultist board without chosen cultists and it still felt really good it always kills units for you it's just way too safe and it's way too transition uh, it's way too easy to transition into mid game
Yeah, but th that makes it so a three star chosen cultist is, is six to four. It, it doesn't really matter. Even if you go nine cultists, you rarely ever go for a three star um, cultist. Um, and then, as I said, because they are shifting more player damage onto early games, such as stage three, they're um, tuning down Diana four, tuning down Lissandra four, tuning down Nami uh, reroll. And they're actually buffing Yasuo, I think. This has to be a buff, right? Steal damage 160 to 180, 190 to 200. It is a buff. Wait, why the. Oh, it's a jump. Why is that an adjustment? How is that not just a buff? Okay, whatever. Um, it, it looks like a buff, unless I'm completely missing something here. Um, but I think Duel's Rear is actually not that bad. They're slightly buffing Aphelios, slightly buffing Lulu. They're making it so um, now when your Lulu casts twice, it's not going to just, your unit's not just going to miss the HP. It, it's okay. But this is like the biggest change right here. It's the Jarvan. It's it's two second to one second stun, which is whatever. But the mana is straight up like almost halved. It went from 60 out of 120, so 60 mana to cast, to 50 out of 80. So it's almost always going to be, I, I feel like the, I'm actually about to hit 2k LP this patch, no cap. Because I'm, I'm really comfortable with the Sunfire opener and just flexing random garbage into my comp late game. A Sunfire Jarvan, uh, especially as I said with the Cultist Keeper opener, is going to be beyond broken. Slightly nerfing Pike's numbers, but that's not the reason he's strong. I think it's his mana cost that is the reason he's strong. And not only that, Chosen Pike is a different level of broken it's not more so the base damage it's that that it's a uh, reduced mana slightly buffing zed i'm I, I think ninja zed is actually pretty okay um and this will maybe nudge it into a uh, better spot in the meta slightly buffing akali which is fine um jinx is a pretty big change they're they're changing the uh the chosen from spell power so extra 30 percent ap to 25 percent reduction in mana but they're th that's meaningful because they're also making it out of 120 so chosen jinx is really strong and right now, how Sharpshooter Jinx works is unless the the alt is hitting directly a unit, it won't stun it. But now the AoE will stun, and they're increasing the stun uh, duration. I'm not entirely sure. I know a lot of people are complaining about how this might be broken, but I'm actually not entirely sure. I just think Sharpshooters are a little... Uh, we'll have to see, because they're also buffing Jin. So I don't, I don't really want to speak too much on this. Just know that Jinx actually got... Almost like a rework. So Zin Zhao, they're trying to make Zin Zhao into an actual carry. I don't know how this will change. I actually think BT, like QSS, Titans, or GA, or whatever on Zin, actually seems pretty acceptable. So um, we'll have to see with Zin Zhao. If anything, it just makes duels a little bit stronger, which is nice. Because right now, duels, it kind of just feels like you go 8. If you don't hit Yone or Lee Sin, it's about 4. If you hit, you can still like maybe go 4th. But if you like Omega High Roll, and then you can go 9, and then fit in like your entire comp, then it's actually good. But that's just like... I feel like figuring out how you're gonna place based on a level eight rolldown is a little bit like sketchy. Um, Cassiopeia, they're just it's just a straight nerf. They're just increasing the mana. the The first cast is is really identical though. I think they're just scared of um, chosen Cassio like going infinite with Thresh or something. But they they are buffing the the damage of Cassio, so they're they're making it more of like a positional unit, I guess. But it already is like that. So, but overall, I don't think it really matters. I think Cassio, I, there was an argument for her being strong, so that's good. Um, Jin. Uh, Jin is gaining 15 AD, which is pretty strong. Um, I really think that the meta is just going to be a puzzle on how to get four dusk random frontline or random frontline plus gain carry. So Talon, finally, we're no longer have to deal with Talon. It's going to be well. It's not that like it's still strong. I played a PVE tournament with Mark Dog, and it was it was pretty fun. But uh, Talon sim seemed okay, but it was at 30 mana. So the difference between 50 and 40 is it was at 30 before. So now that it's at 40, it's going to be two. It's going to be three autos to cast. But if it were at 30, it was two autos to cast, and that's what I played on, and that one felt fine. But 40 actually seems a little a little sketchy. I still think the unit is probably playable just because you're running morgana which is dazzler which is still good and the morgana is a really good morella holder lux is a good unit you're running a lot of good units so i still think the comp is playable it's just not going to feel as oppressive uh which is which is definitely good they're also nerfing his numbers so yeah Talon's no longer enrolled during his leap he is still stoppable and untargetable which is just like i mean i i think okay so the, the reason they're doing it is because everyone is complaining about how oppressive it is but i think this is actually just killing talent warwick is they're getting they're buffing his numbers but they're nerfing his kit except it might not be a nerf it's going to be instead of fearing it's now going to give people that have the same trait brawler divine and hunter um extra attack speed for the fight um, which is pretty good with Hunter because uh, Warwick will almost always contribute. So now, like maybe RC Warwick is okay, and you just keep him alive, and then buff your other units. So that'll be that'll be interesting. I I really like the concept of attack speed. Azir slight nerf instead of getting two casts, it'll probably just cast once and not cast again. I think if Azir does cast twice, it's kind of just like bro, like none of your units can, units can move. I don't I don't I don't really agree. I really wish that they they look towards um 
cane and and stuff but I'll, I'll talk about that at the end um okay so lee sin primary stun is going to be an extra second longer which is the biggest thing to look at but the uh, secondary units aren't stunned as long which is fine it's it's a fair trade-off but this is big because now when it kicks a unit it's not just going to get unstunned and then decorner the biggest thing is riven and Riven will almost always just dash behind Lee Sin and then get kicked to the other side, then dash behind Lee Sin and get kicked to the other side, and it'll never get kicked off the map. Um, but this will definitely help it um, survive. And then Set starting mana is increasing by 30, which is really big, and now Set will rarely ever uh, mana bug, where it'll be mid-cast, lose to 30%, or whatever the HP cutoff is, and then fall off. So I think Set is actually 100% a playable, splashable uh, unit. Yone, they are making it so no longer CCs. But Yone will become untargetable during his cast, so that's actually pretty good because it does a uh, aggro toggle. And then the shred gets increased as well. So now Yone positioning is going to be more valuable instead of just middle. But they're, they're taking away the CC but increasing his utility, which is fine. But I guess I misspoke because CC and utilities are kind of the same. But whatever. Um, total mana is, yeah. So it's just going to be like more of like a, a shredding, like four Vanguard, four Mystic unit. So you can just splash him in and stuff like that. But this is where I talk about Kane. Cause like, I feel like in the tournament, Kane, Kane was like one of those units that kind of defined the tournament. Every single, every single board that won. Um, by the way, this tournament, if you don't know, it was the, um, NA, NA qualifiers. It had like 24 of the best players or like 16 of the best players. Sorry. I didn't mean to ego, but if you know, you know, but anyway, and, and every single winning, winning board just had Kane on it. Um, it was just random frontline plus Kane. Um, other than that, like Talon could win. Like obviously Talon three would probably win. Like Yone two with Talon can win. But but the biggest star of the show that came almost out of nowhere was Kane and how strong um, Kane would be if you can find him early. So like this patch, I'm worried that it's just going to be a four five and pray for Kane. Um, I think if you can have him evolved um, from for the beginning of stage five or middle of stage five, you you can actually just because Kane can just solo the entire board. Um, so my my prediction for this patch is going to be generally cultist keeper opener into a cultist mid game into a pivot your comp into dust keeper vanguard sharpshooter hunter like random random keeper frontline random dusk frontline random mystic vanguard frontline and then just carries backline which is a pretty healthy meta but i i think that um it, like winning the game is just high roll mid game high roll early game go fast nine and then play around kane carry with frontline uh kane lilia uh, specifically um but zz rot um they're also they're also slightly nerfing zz rot which is which is pretty good because i think zz rot was a little bit strong that that's the entire patch um the biggest thing is the role changes um so you're not going to get bailed out on level seven or you're not going to just miss on level seven and feel like your game's doomed but i will update you guys with a tier list probably a, a couple days into the patch i plan on doing a long stream hope you guys enjoyed peace guys sub <laughs>